You think you know Nintendo, but you don't. Oh sure, maybe you can rattle off the names of all the Cooper kids. Maybe you've got a shiny Mewtwo in your Pokedex, and maybe you can finish Ocarina of Time's Water Temple with your eyes closed. But that doesn't mean you know everything. Some of the most popular, well-known bits of Nintendo trivia aren't accurate. Here are some of the false facts about Nintendo you always thought were true. Mario's original name was Jumpman. When Mario made his big debut in Donkey Kong, he wasn't called Mario. As the story goes, Nintendo's mascot was previously called Jumpman, since his big superpower was, well, jumping. And that's all true, but Jumpman wasn't Mario's original name. According to none other than Shigeru Miyamoto, the man who created Mario in the first place, the little plumber was supposed to have a different name altogether from the start. During a chat with the former president of Nintendo, the late Satoru Iwata, he explained, I called him Mr. Video. My plan was to use the same character in every video game I made. I thought the way Alfred Hitchcock cropped up in all films he directed was really cool. Miyamoto thought Mr. Video could fill a similar role. Thankfully, he changed his mind on the name quickly and decided to officially name the character after Nintendo of America's landlord, Mario Sigali. Fortunately, Nintendo changed Mario's last name too, though whether or not that is an improvement is debatable. Name, Mario. Last name? Mario. Okay, what's your name? Luigi. Luigi, Luigi? No, Luigi Mario. Donkey Kong is a mistranslation of Monkey Kong. On the subject of strange Nintendo names, Donkey Kong is a pretty weird one. Especially for a character who's an ape, not, well, a donkey. In fact, it's so strange, many fans over the years have assumed Donkey was supposed to read Monkey, and the current spelling is nothing more than a translation error. But it's not. Miyamoto explained in an interview, I looked up Donkey in the dictionary and found that it could also be used to mean Goofy. That means that the actual definition of Donkey Kong's name is Goofy Monkey. The Kong part is a reference to King Kong, naturally. Of course, to native English speakers, that name still doesn't make any sense, and Miyamoto knows it. Nintendo of America pushed back on the name, which, you know, is actual gibberish. Noting that nobody who actually speaks English thinks that donkey means goofy. But Miyamoto, stubborn like a, well, like a donkey, insisted that they keep the name anyway. At least he didn't call him Donkey Donkey. What did you mean when you said, feel my skills, donkey, 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 donkey? <laughs> The NES was Nintendo's first home console. The Nintendo Entertainment System, better known as the NES, might be the system that made the Japanese game maker synonymous with video games. But it wasn't actually Nintendo's first attempt to infiltrate the homes of players around the world. In the late 70s, Nintendo released a handful of home consoles in Japan under the Color TV game banner, which brought some of Nintendo's biggest arcade games into players' living rooms. But there's a reason you've never heard about the Color TV game system. It kind of sucked. The plug and play consoles came out before Donkey Kong, Nintendo's first big hit, and most of the titles included on the Color TV game consoles were just knockoffs of other, more popular games. The first two systems, Color TV Game 6 and Color TV Game 15 tried to gussy up its offerings with names like hockey and volleyball, but each one was just a slightly different version of Pong. Color TV game Blockbreaker contained a single player breakout clone, while the last entry, simply called Computer TV Game, only played one game, a computer version of the board game Othello, aptly named Computer Othello. It's about as exciting as it sounds. Still, the Color TV game line wasn't a complete bust. Not only did it sell around 3 million copies, but the Color TV game Blockbreaker was the first Nintendo product made by Miyamoto, who went on to create virtually every Nintendo character you love. So all in all, that sounds like a win. What do I know? Good. Blowing into the NES cartridges makes them work better. Every kid knew the trick. If the Nintendo or Super Nintendo was having trouble reading a game, you had to take the cartridge out, blow into it as hard as you could, and then put the game back in. No one really knew why it worked, it just did. Awesome! Or did it? 
Researchers have tried to figure out why blowing into the cartridges had the effect it did, and have all come up empty. The crew of PBS's It's OK To Be Smart and the staff at Mental Floss think they've figured out why. The placebo effect. Apparently, what actually made a difference was simply removing and reinserting the game cartridge. Blowing into it was just a bunch of hot air. See, the pins the NES used to connect cartridges to the console were cheap and wore out quickly. If you combined the pins' well-documented problems with the dirt that built up inside the machine after spending months on the living room floor, it becomes pretty difficult to get a reliable connection on the first, second, or tenth try. But keep inserting and reinserting, and you should get a connection eventually. In fact, blowing into your games might have actually made things worse. Nintendo Nintendo's instruction manual warns that your breath can corrode and contaminate the pin connectors, while Mental Floss says that the extra moisture might also make mold and mildew more likely to grow inside the machine, and unlike super mushrooms, mold is a bad fungus. Luigi, no! <laughs> Luigi. Justin Bailey worked on Metroid. Years before lonely hackers transformed Tomb Raider into Nude Raider, teenage horn dogs could catch a sweet, sweet glimpse of digital skin by finishing Metroid in under an hour, unlocking a steamy special ending in which Samus appeared in her underwear. If that wasn't titillating enough, fans could also input the name Justin Bailey at the game's password screen to strip Samus down to a swimsuit-like zero suit, which is pretty much the sexiest outfit ever crammed into 20 26 by 48 pixels. But just who is the mysterious digital flesh peddler? Common wisdom holds that Justin Bailey was a programmer who worked on Metroid, but that's debunked by the game's end credits, where neither a Justin nor a Bailey appears. Other people claim that Bailey is an English and Australian name for a bathing suit and that the password is a pun, i.e. Justin a Bailey. But if you ask anyone from either of those countries, they'll probably say, That's bollocks. To write, according to George Sinfield, a former writer for Nintendo Power, the password's resemblance to a real-life name is just a chance occurrence. Given how many variables Metroid keeps track of, the game doesn't use pre-programmed passwords and instead generates codes on the fly. In fact, Justin Bailey isn't the only password that traps Samus in her skivvies, entering 0000000000020 twice works too, so the whole thing is probably a coincidence. But if the passcode is just a chance occurrence, how did anybody even find it in the first place? Sinfield has a theory. I wrote the classified information section back then and got tips and tricks from a lot of sources, including players who sent us letters. My guess is that someone named Justin Bailey wrote to Nintendo with the code after inputting his own name and getting interesting results. Either way, we can all agree on one thing. Samus wouldn't survive a second on Zebus in her undies, so the code making her do so is just cruel. Spacesuits exist for a reason, you know? Nintendo developed the Power Glove. The Power Glove's signature moment comes about halfway through the 90-minute toy commercial, The Wizard. Lucas Barton, the ultimate 80s cool kid stereotype and the best teenage villain in movie history, looks super serious and says, I love the Power Glove. It's so bad. Lucas was right though, not in the way that he meant. If you never tried one, believe it. The Power Glove is flat out terrible. Really, it barely works. But don't blame Nintendo for that. While the Power Glove's black and grey design makes it look like a Nintendo product, it was actually designed by a company called AGE and manufactured by Mattel, who used cheap parts that barely registered players' movements. All Nintendo did was slap its logo on the box, and we all know how valuable a guarantee printed on a box really is. Hey, if you want me to take a dump in a box and mark it guaranteed, I will. I got spare time. Yoshi is a dude. With few exceptions, Nintendo's games tend to stick to pretty traditional gender roles, at least when human characters are involved. Mario is the hero, Peach is the damsel in distress, rinse, repeat. But when it comes to Nintendo's animal pals, gender gets a lot more confusing. Take Yoshi, for example. In English, Mario's dinosaur pal is typically referred to as a he, but Yoshi also lays eggs, which is not something that, historically speaking, males do. 
Part of the confusion is that the character we think of isn't actually named Yoshi, and Yoshi is a species, not just one dinosaur thing. For proof, look no further than the various Yoshis who've hung out with Mario throughout several video games over the years. In fact, the first Yoshi Mario encounters in Super Mario World is actually named T. Yoshisa Munchakupas, according to Nintendo's 1993 character guide. And that Yoshi, based on the pronouns, sure seems to be a dude. Right, but then what's with the eggs? Well, according to the Japanese version of Super Smash Bros. Melee, Yoshis are neither male nor female at all. And really, when Yoshi lays eggs, it seems to happen after he's eaten a bunch of stuff. But also, sometimes Yoshi straight up throws eggs around, which is kind of, you know, it's, it's bad parenting. And sometimes Yoshi turns into a helicopter. You know what? Trying to puzzle out the biological nuances of some fictional video game dinosaur is probably just too much. Suffice it to say, there's lots of Yoshis out there, and all of them lay eggs, and well, sometimes it's a dude, sometimes it's a lady, sometimes it's made of yarn, and sometimes, well, sometimes it's a helicopter and a submarine. Yoshi is weird. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.